Alright, so the guide that I followed said all the finished items need to be in the same folder. So for that, our file structure is going to look a little something like this. Here's the actual project folder with raw files, raw textures, and then we're going to make a folder here called finished or whatever. And we're just going to put everything that is actually going to be used in here. So for me, I have this raw texture I downloaded from textures.com. And I'm going to copy and paste this into the uh, finished folder three times because I know I'm going to have three objects. Uh, and that this way, if we screw up the textures later when we bake them, we'll, uh, we'll be fine because then we can always just go back and grab new ones. All right, then here in Blender, we're just going to quickly save the project into the raw section of our file structure project folder thing. All right, and then for here, I'm going to make my environment. I'm going to enable the magnet at the top here, and that just lets me make this a little more symmetrical. Another thing to note is that the head for the user will always spawn at 0, 0, 0 and it will always be facing in the positive y direction. So I'll be putting my screen where you'll be facing. And then we're going to add a plane, and we are going to rename this screen with a capital S. It needs to be named this way or else the engine won't pick it up. And if you don't intend on using a fixed screen, that's fine. You can just leave this part out. And then I'm going to add two spot lamps just so you can see kind of how the lighting works. All right, and then for the actual textures, just go down the material tab here. Uh, I'm going to just leave this default. The only thing I'm doing is in the color here. I'm going to click this, change this to an image texture, and I'm going to load up the texture that I want. And then after I've done that for all of these, you're going to push uh, Control-U, and you're going to just UV unwrap it however you want. If you know what you're doing, you can do it manually. I'm just going to do this smart UV unwrap and leave it as is. Okay, and now in the scene properties here, we're going to go to units and we're going to make this 0 0.01 because the engine is working at a scale about a hundred times smaller. This also makes it so you can make your project and you can just fiddle with this number until it's about the size that you're looking for. Alright, and then after that, at the top here, we are going to go in the render properties and we're going to change this from EV to Cycles, because this will allow us to actually bake the textures with lighting and whatever else we need. Uh, scrolling down here, I don't really mess around with this too much. Uh, I know sometimes if you switch this to the diffuse texture or whatever, uh, it might look better and whatnot, but you might also get fucked around with the black texture baking. There are ways to fix that, I don't really know them, because I haven't messed around with this too much. Yeah, I'm sure you can find a tutorial if you're looking to do something specific with the textures. Anyway, just click Bake, and it will do its thing, and we'll do this for all three of these textures. Alright, and with all the textures baked, now we're just going to switch over to the UV mode, or however you want to get to this, and you're going to save these textures as is. And this is why we have this in their own separate folders, because after we bake them, they each basically just become their own thing, and that's fine. And that will do it for the physical model environments. Now you're going to go is up to the top left, File, Export, and we're going to do a .fbx. I just leave all the settings here the same, and just make sure that it's in the finished project folder. So with all our finished textures and all that good stuff. Alright, so for the cube maps, we're going to just keep this basic. So the basic cube map, which you can see on the left middle here, uh, this is your basic one. Uh, if you want to do something like this, it needs to be in a .dds format. If you want to do that, download an application called paint.net. That's probably the easiest way to do it. You can just edit it or make it in your favorite uh, little editor. Export it as a PNG, put it in paint, export it as a DDS. But for me, this has always caused a black screen. So instead, I'm going to use a stereo cube map, which can just use a .jpg or a .png. So the way you do this, you can see here uh, the middle left to the top right. The top right is your basic format for your stereo cube map. At the bottom you can see it's just paste twice. Like the idea of this is you would have two different perspectives for your cube map. Uh, we're not going to be really caring about this. We're just going to keep it just flat. So 
you can download this as a reference below uh, and then you know use it to make your own and then at the very bottom you can see the cube map I'm going to use. So all this is is once you've translated it once you just copy and paste it to the right once again and that's it. That's how you make a stereo cube map. Save this is .png. This is a big file for me. Mine was like I think 30 megabytes, 20 megabytes, something like that. And that's it. So now you can go wherever your uh, virtual desktop is installed for me. That's just Steam. So I'm going to go uh, over here, manage, local files. Here we are. And then you're going to open up this application called environment editor.dxe. This is the actual thing. So give it a name. Uh, give it the, this first image here is for the application. So you can have this be whatever you want. And then we're going to load up our actual 3D model here. All right. And then uh, we're going to check the fixed screen here. We're going to use the time warp layer and dynamic lighting. Time warp layer is pretty much if you just have a flat screen. You know, this isn't going to fuck around that much. Uh, supposedly, if you don't have a flat screen, if you're going for that curved monitor thing, this might not work as well. And then dynamic lighting I just like because I think it looks cool, even though I think, in my opinion, Virtual Desktop has some of the worst dynamic lighting just because of how laggy it is. Like, it'll always change after, but it still looks cool, it's whatever. Now we're going to check the stereo cube map here. We're going to load in the file that we made. Uh, so that really big one, that long one. And that's it. So to test this, you can just click Create at the bottom here. And if everything goes good, uh, it'll just load and work. If everything's black, it's probably your cube map. So you can deselect that and reload it, and it should work. If you're having a perpetual loading problem where it keeps like activating the application and closing it, there's a good chance it's because your screen isn't named the right thing. So go back into Blender, check your screen name, make sure it's named right, re-export it as a, as a .fbx, probably something different than what you initially, originally did, so maybe like tutorial2.fbx in my case, right? Or just delete the original fbx and save it the same thing. Does it Because sometimes it won't work to just re-export it as the same name, I found. It kind of fucks with that. And past that, if you want to submit this to the workshop, uh, you can see the file needs to be less than 2 megabytes. In my experience, these need to be .jpegs. It doesn't work with .pngs for some reason. So yeah, you can go ahead, get an image, publish it to Steam, and that's it. That's all. Now, I don't really know everything about this, uh, so I'll leave the link to the guide that I followed in the bottom here. Uh, if you have any questions, I'd go there, because I'm not going to answer anything. Bye.